The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Zurich Australia Limited, ABN 92000 010 195 AFSL 232 510 and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Hi, I'm Andrew Rocks from Ensemble, and I'm thrilled to be bringing to you uh, the podcast Engine Room. It's devoted entirely to the practices or the business of the business of financial advice. Over the course of the next many months, we're going to be interviewing Australia's best independent boutique advice firms, their practice managers, their GMs, on what environment is conducive to being a best practice how they keep talent, how they attract talent, and what the future of financial advice is. It's the Engine Room Podcast. Welcome aboard. Zurich is proud to be supporting this episode. The Zurich and OnePath Advisor portal is more efficient than ever before, giving you access to two leading brands with three highly sought-after products, underpinned by two powerful underwriting engines, all with one simple sign-on, making it easier for you to do business and perform at your best. Hi, I'm Andrew Roxon. Welcome to another edition of the Engine Room on the Road. We're here today in a fabulous uh, studio in Collingwood. Shout out to our Collingwood sound team. I know that Kieran, the sound guy, is uh, very jealous of your your kit. So um, I think that'll be my first complaint. So so today I'm joined um, by one of the partners of Stratagem, um, who's come all the way down from Bendigo. Uh, Chris Tat, how are you? Thanks, Roxy. Yep, uh, all the way here from Bendigo today to the big smoke, uh, as we call it out there in regional Victoria, but uh, glad to be here and uh, looking forward to getting into today. Well, I think you've uh, I think you've got a business in Melbourne as well, right? So we do assuming, we do we do have a footprint in Melbourne as well. So yeah, it's not it's not too too out of the way to come down here, and it's a we're on Collins Street, so it's an easy train ride to get in there and um, get to the office with with not too much hassle or traffic. So it's good. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So look, when we were chatting um, off air, which I've just been informed by the sound guy wasn't off air, <laughs> so uh, there'll be there'll be some sort of um, Jackie Chan um, edit um, out out clips at the end um, for those of you playing a at home. Um, but we were speaking about, you know, the way in which you got into Stratagem was quite quite direct. You know, you, you went to university. There was there was a period of one year that's not on your LinkedIn, um, which which we didn't want to, you know, I think at the time you put your, your finger to your lips and sort of just shook your head saying, no, I'm not talking about that. But um, maybe give me a bit of an idea of, of um, you know, why you went straight into that role because it's not the most common path for people falling into financial planning. No, well, I actually didn't actually start in financial planning. Uh, I actually started in a admin role. I was covering a uh, maternity leave contract and I just wanted to get my foot in the door any way I could. Um, so I went and did the old fashioned hand in the resume and talked to the CEO who was there at the time and um, started off in a, in an admin position and then got and into- What were you doing in the engine room? Uh, in the in the SMSF uh, team. So I, it was my first uh, exposure to SMSFs. We'd spent about half an hour at uni talking about it and I had no idea what they were. And uh, here I was um, at Stratagem uh, learning all the ropes about- uh, about SMSFs and things like that. Um, I would say that the uh, the admin person that, that worked with me at the time got a, a little bit frustrated with my filing uh, abilities and things like that, but uh, very soon moved into a graduate role uh, there and then uh, loved the investment side of things. So I actually did power planning for a little while, yep. uh, which I thought was uh, interesting, uh, but was struggling a little bit sometimes with the grey space of financial planning and was sort of going, uh, and um, at that time it actually opened up that I was able to move into the SMSF manager role. So I stepped back into accounting for a little bit longer. So, so shout out to La Trobe University for their full 30 minutes of, uh, <laughs> of education in, out of the three to five years. Lord knows how long you, you, you spent at that university. So for those 30 minutes, the hex was well worth it for uh, what you're yeah, yeah, doing. Yeah, def- definitely, uh, definitely well worth it, yes. And I, I think any time we get a graduate in, we always say, look, temper your expectations. There's a lot to learn on the job. You haven't really learnt as much as you probably think you have in the last three to five years at uni. So um, so there's there's a lot of learning. I, I think 
I would love to see more more of that uh, at at university level. I think is actually being able to do rounds like teachers and nurses and things like that because I think we would lose we wouldn't lose as many. Uh, we saw a lot of people who would start the courses and not be there at the end, and it's because they didn't actually get to experience what it's like. And I think if they did, it would be a lot more interesting for them. So yeah, I think you're right, and mm. I think um, you know I know that ensemble that's one of the passions to do yeah. that. In fact, um, there was was some um, pretty pretty progressed conversations in in people who were in nurse and accounting in particular who might want to do a career change. So mm. so I think we're on the same wavelength there. Yeah. Now, the in order to be specialised in self-managed super funds, you must have walked into a, an otherwise reasonably substantial accounting operation. Is that right? It, yeah. So um, Strategy uh, has been quite large and we've been around for about 90 years. Um, so I was able to walk into quite a large firm. I think there was about nine partners at that point in time. Um, and and we uh, were looking after around 380 uh, SMSFs at that stage. So um, quite a large book of SMSFs that we were, were dealing with at the time. So a lot of exposure to a lot of different areas of it um, and very quickly progressed to being able to get my specialist um, accreditation as well too. So um, that's sort of my inroad into the advice sort of things. And then over time, it was naturally wanting to help clients more than just tell them what their refund was or how their financials went for last year. Um, and so I went down the road of becoming an authorised rep on our licence. Uh, then in 2021, I uh, was able to become a partner. So I stepped into a uh, partnership with um, another lady, uh, Emmy, of the firm at the time. So we sort of started in that role together a couple of years ago. And then... Um, in a couple of months into that role, then stepped into the GM role of overseeing both our financial planning and and SMSF area. So, so just for just for just for jokes, so, so basically you, you've 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 made partner. They've they've gone. Geez, you'd be pretty good. You know, we're being a great advisor, and then three months in, they've gone. Uh oh, we better make him general manager. <laughs> So uh, this is coming from a guy who started off uh, being an advisor and ended up being uh, not an advisor in his own practice. Uh, so yep. it's a well-worn path. Maybe they'll try to get me off the tools a little bit and sort of say, how about we just put you in the manager role and, 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 and then you don't have to um, see as many clients. Or we can finish like this podcast yeah. now. Chris has, Chris has worked out. <laughs> He's worked it out. So now in, in, whilst you're doing um, – that so you kicked off in 2012, which uh, yep. which uh, always good to kick off just as the um, future of financial advice legislation comes in. Yes, I'm not sure what your parents would have thought when you're going. I'm going into this growth industry. Oh bugger! <laughs> they, I, I think they were just happy to see that I'd gone to uni and were sort of trusting I'd fall on my feet in whatever went next. Um, I think they were they were very big on making sure that um, that I was using my head and not my hands. And, um, and were you? Did you grow up in Bendigo? Yeah, grew up in Bendigo, so had a couple of years in New South Wales, actually. So for ever, anyone in New South Wales, I can speak your language and can understand you. I picked and, up on the literacy. Pressure. Yeah, thank you. Yep. yep. Um, so spent a couple of years up there at Batemans Bay, so a beautiful little spot up there, and then came back to Bendigo and uh, sort of finished schooling here in Bendigo and uni and then uh, met. Met my wife here, or well, knew my wife for many years, and then then we started dating and got married, and have sort of been here ever since. And, and love love Bendigo for its size; it's not too big, not too small. But, uh, got good schools, and it's a Goldilocks city. It is a little bit actually, yeah. Just yeah, it's uh, it's a really nice spot for that. Um, if you love the busy city life, probably not so much, but it is great for families, which is yeah. Which it's just is, down the road here. You come down here exactly. and get the best of, of 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 both worlds. And and look, um, you've you outlined your your journey inside strategy, but at the same time, yourself and your wife have been busy raising four kids under the age of eight. So yes. for everyone listening now, there's just a collective sigh going, well, I can see why you're excelling at work because home, home's a, probably a, <laughs> the general manager of home sounds like a harder job. Yeah, we, um, we've got four kids. We, we ended up, uh, we, we had our first one. Uh, so I was in the hospital on my 30th birthday. So cancelled my birthday celebrations and sat, in, oh, what a, a sacrifice. I'm, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm, I glad, know. I'm, I'm glad that you're both not here because this would be an interesting uh, video <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I, I spent my 30th birthday holding our first daughter in, in, in the hospital, which was uh, which well was a bit surreal. Yeah. And then um, and then we found out we were having twins and uh, we just laughed and the obstetrician said, why are you laughing? And we said, well, it's it's probably because we'd cry otherwise. And uh, we were actually in the waiting room waiting to go in. We knew my wife was pregnant and uh, she goes, so when do I get up? upgrade the car and I said well when we get to three kids 
And anyway, we went in, found out we're having twins, and on the way out, she said, so, time to upgrade the car. And I said, it would seem that would be the case. So so you're sitting there with your, 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 your sex on a stick SUV, what, I imagine something like that. Um, <laughs> um, but when the fourth child came along, um, the, uh, you then probably had to upgrade to the least sexiest vehicle on the road. Uh, yeah, the Kia Carnival. <laughs> I, I actually, um, my parents would laugh because I grew up in a family of four and said we, we had a Toyota Tarago. We called it the Rolling Wombat. And it was it looked like a wombat. It was maroon, um, pretty similar to your blazer um, colour there, actually. Easy and tiger. <laughs> and uh, and 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 I said to my parents, I am never having four kids, and I am never owning a van. And so they they're just probably proud that I'm eating my words and uh, driving around in a van with four kids. So that song they, history never repeats. I'm not, I think yeah. uh, I think you've got gazump there. <laughs> uh, well, it's um uh, as as you age, you um. You actually converge and become more like your parents. And this is horrifying for everyone who's out there. I think you also start listening. I don't know what year it is to more AM radio than FM radio. And if you're if you're currently listening to this and this is you, <laughs> then it's already too far. There's no going you, back. You just got to roll with it. I, I do walk around. The, the one thing I notice is that I, I flick the lights off because the kids have a great tendency of leaving lights on everywhere. And I mumble to myself, the place is lit up like a circus. And that's my dad's line. Think of well, at least father, you weren't born so. in a tent and the doors well, are closed. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's probably the other one. One, but uh, yeah, so it is. It is funny some of that, but look, it's great, great rewarding um, thing uh, raising kids. Uh, we had the twins growing up through COVID, which was interesting. So working from home and having two one-year-olds knocking on the door as you're trying to do a Teams call or um, talk to clients and things like that. So, but we we got through all of that, and it was uh, we were on the other side, and it's uh, it's it's going great. So, mm. so you've. Become the the GM. Was that a new new role, or did you? Was there someone who was in that role, and they've sort of or they've recrafted the org structure? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. So we um we had a, a period with a couple of different uh, GMs that that were in that role, and then we uh, at an AGM put up pull. Put a lot of our tag roles up for nomination, so we have tag roles within the business. So what does that got, mean? Uh, yep, that's a good question. So we've got the board, which is basically our partnership. So mm-hmm. there's eight partners who currently sit on the board, uh, and within that, those tag positions. So there's a finance manager, there's a GM for um, advice, GM for uh, tax and accounting in Bendigo, a GM for um, our Melbourne office as well, mm-hmm. and then um, a chairman and a managing partner. So and, and your chair is George, is that right? It is. Yep, yeah. Yep. So George, George heads up. Our our Melbourne office, uh, and he's also our chairman at the moment as well too. Yeah. So, um, so the the role came up, and I I I don't know whether it was um, whether it was there right or not, but uh, put put my hand up for the role, um, and uh, yeah, sort of there was a bit of a process we went through, getting some feedback from staff and what they were looking for and things like that at the time as well too. Um, we'd had and what a, were they looking for? Uh, looking for stability, looking for for leadership, and and I'd sort of come through as as a bit of a, a, a bit of an obvious choice mm-hmm. um, with where I'd been there. We'd had a bit of turnover um, through the start of COVID, and even um, coming out of COVID as well too. So uh, trying to bring a bit of stability to the team, which we've which we've got there now, and it's it's going really well. And so. maybe throughout the podcast, we're going to I might ask some insights into you know what you've done, what little one percentage you've done to yeah, create some more definitely. stability. Because yep. for a business of 90 years, um, you know, the stereotype would be that you'd have some long tenured people. But um, the nature of our industry and the nature of, of, of what COVID has done to um, where people can work, who they can work for, mm. I imagine that, um, you know, on your website, you guys have got a great building on, on the corner there. It's a solid thing. It's got very much that old country bank vibe. Yes. You know, security, stability, bricks and mortar, um, which which for, uh, you know, 90, no, so 85 years was probably really good. But then COVID happened. Everyone went, well, we can just go online. Yes. Including your employees. Correct. And um, and we, we probably... We had a lot of changes around our staff staffing entitlements and what we did with staff over COVID as well too. So probably very um, traditionally nine to five business Monday to Friday in the office, um, and coming out of COVID looks completely different from that. So I don't know if you want to get into that now. Or... We might, we might, we might get a. So uh, I love it. I love the forward <laughs> nature. So um, it's uh, it's 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 good that we went through this beforehand. But um, I'm liking the shortcuts. Oh, sorry. But, uh, no, no, no. It's it's great. It's great. <laughs> I'm, I'm, so on that, we've got um, – uh, so apart from being, you know, uh, we spoke um, off air um, 
you know, you're a, a, a big accounting firm and a big mortgage, uh, sorry, a big financial planning firm with yep. self minute super fund, but might be pretty good just to paint a bit of a picture of, of what it is. So what, what is the numbers and what is the sort of structure of the business? Yeah. So we've, I mean, if we work from out from the top down, we've got eight partners, six in our tax and accounting area. And so, is that partner in name only or is there equity? Yeah, equity as well. So okay. all, all partners are equity equity holders as including well. Including yourself, yeah? Yeah, including myself. So okay. um, if you're a partner, you're an equity holder, partner slash director, um, yep. and then and then we all have an equal share in, in each of the, in the businesses as well. So it's sort of, Everyone's in together, and everyone's yep. working for 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 the benefits together of the business. So your partner so. in the head co, and part of that would be might be accounting activities, self managed super fund activities, and wealth advisories. Correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. And what, how many numbers? What's what's the headcount? Um, so it counts around 60, um, yep. give or take, and yep. uh, eight, eight partners. We've got six, a, six ARs, including myself, in the yep. advice area. Um, not that not that I have a full book at all, but uh, on that side. Um, but, yeah, it's six, six ARs, and then we've got another six support staff that sit under that, and then um, I look after another six staff thereabouts in our self-managed super fund area as well. So, And, um, you know, we've spoken – uh, about the fact that you got into the business, you started in the self managed super fund. You had 380 or 308, I can't remember, um, self managed super funds. You know, almost a decade ago. Um, what's the client type? I mean, you're kind of at that. Being in Bendigo, you've got some urban clients. You've probably got some agri. Yes. What, what does a strategy and client look like? There is a there is a there is a good mix of clients. There we've got obviously probably an aging client population. Uh, definitely across the advice business, we see a lot of our um, ongoing clients are at the end of their business life cycle and they're starting to see that next stage of life. Well, let's hope they listen to this podcast soon then. Is that right? Because <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> No, you've got a lot of people. No. So, But you so, would obviously be looking at the intergenerational transfer play. Yeah, correct. So we've got we've actually got an insurance specialist. So one of our ARs is an insurance specialist as well. Um, and so we've got uh, quite an insurance uh, size book. I think we've got about 2,000 um, policies that we look yeah. after across – um, across our clients as well, so our insurance specialist sort of sits sits there with them, uh, and so definitely on the on the growth side, we see um, we're engaging younger business owners for that protection piece, and then as they build their wealth, then they sort of move into more um, more of that in investment, superannuation, wealth creation, building, and things like that as well too. So, so mainly self employed business owners, is that right? Yeah, a lot of a lot of our tax and accounting clients are yeah. are that small business, and um, is that. What's the, what's the penetration rate onto the financial planning? What what percentage of, of commonality? Yeah, I, I, we're probably looking at around 20, 20 to thirty percent of clients yeah. um, would would share across across both sides. And um, there's never going to be a hundred percent. But what would be your asp? What's the what's the aspiration of, of the partners when you all get together on your strategy day? Yeah, I, I think I think for us, we we want to make sure every client um, is has everything they need to mm-hmm. be successful. So um, we, we've we got a lot of uh, individual clients that we still serve as well. And so we're actually seeing a lot of them who have been with us for years now seeking um, retirement advice and things like that as well too. So it's not – we – we want to look at each client and say, what is it that you need to be successful? What is it that you need um, from that perspective? And then we can bring in who we need around that side of things. So whether it's bringing in um, the insurance specialist, bringing in um, taxation advice, bringing in um, even our tax partners all have d- different specialties that they probably deal with a little bit more. Um, so who, who do we need to get in the room um, to get the best outcome for the client is sort of what we we strive to do um, rather than say we need 70, 80% penetration. It's more around saying we, we want to make sure that we've got everyone lined up with what they need. So we have gone through that project once or twice. Where we've actually seen every client and actually named what 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 they could have. Like in a bit of a matrix. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a service matrix yeah. just to say how can we service them better. Um, and then and then, um, and then then we get back on with life. And Every time you do that, <laughs> the one of the things you always go, you always go, oh, it's truth, I've forgotten about that. You know, yes. like it's a great exercise. It's it like is. spring cleaning. You find something under the bed. It is. And we, we're currently about to go through a transition of our practice management software and I think that'll be a bit of an impetus for us to review all of that, that side again and see how we can do those services. So we're, we're currently – Got a project group moving to FYI. Um, if we're talking about tech stacks, um, FYI, uh, we've been with Myob uh, for many years, and we've just we just 
we want to move a bit more with uh, cloud computing, if I can say that, and sort of something that will integrate with everything else. That How am I open up in the cloud fully? I know it's coming, and I interview a lot of accountants, and I've got a mate who was the CEO of Myob for years, but but they are years behind their yes. competitors. Yeah, we, we went through a really robust process to pick who we wanted. So we actually built – we actually went through a needs analysis for the business mm-hmm. and then sent that out to um, the different different uh, practice management software providers and said, you need to come and pitch to us. Yep. Um, here's what we're looking for. Tell us how you can meet those needs. So we've sort of put them on the back foot a little bit. And does that do um, um, proposals and billing in accounting as well? Yes, yeah. So it's sort of the practice management is our client database, billings, uh, invoicing, uh, reporting, yeah. um, staffing, tracking our staff and things like that as well too. So it's a quite a large piece and what we want to do is bring more of – uh, a one client approach to what yep. we do. So uh, FYI for us made sense because every user we can set up custom tasks where Maya is a very rudimentary job manager where we sort of said, well, we really want to be able to do custom tasks. We really want to be able to see every client and go, where's the SOA at? Where's the tax return at? When's the next review coming up? And those kind of things. And when you've got these siloed um, software solutions, you just don't have that. It requires a lot of people effort. It does. Which is infallible. It, it, there's or always fallible, sorry. there's always going to be mistakes, and that's yeah. it, even the best best um, best staff will will miss something here and there. Where we just want a system where it, it, we go back to that. It's it's the client first, and we're serving the client um, through what we do. And I think that's what Stratagem has always tried to strive for. Um, is that we want a one stop shop where people come in and they get they get looked after with everything they need. They don't have to go here and there or sending them off to somewhere else to get help with this. We bring we bring what we need in, in-house and help them there. So I, I've got two observations. Um, one is that it sounds like if you've been using MYOB, typically for the uninitiated, that was historically the software where people had a lot more moving parts. Euro came in as a disruptor. It was more of a, a nimble software. Yep. Things have changed now, but MYOB insinuated you had a lot of employees, you had a lot of moving parts. You might be industrial, agricultural, et cetera. So that means that from a financial planning division, over the years, you probably get some exciting ed- exits. You get some of your clients selling the thing that they built yes. and having a bit of fun. So that's exciting. Yes. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, yeah. That's always exciting. When, when we get the opportunity, when clients have got the, an exit uh, or, or, you know, we've got business valuations and things that we do, it's great to see them get to that point yeah. and go, you know. All your hard work. Exactly. Yeah. Success. Um, yeah. And, and, and even even it's, even it's just the small ones. Like we, we love to see, um, you know, all the different clients. And I guess for me, when I first came in, I always had an idea of what, what a client would look like before I started strategy. And then you get in and you find out that this person used to do this or this person did this. And you, I loved seeing the stories about how people became successful. And, and, you know, we've got teachers who are just as successful as doctors, but out there in the world, we sort of uphold certain careers where we sort of should be upholding better financial um, decisions uh, well, around what we do. I think so. Robert Frost's poem, mate, with a path less travelled. I think if you find out what your niche is and you execute, yes, regardless of the the genre, um, then then normally good things fall out the bottom. Correct. So the flip side of having these exciting accounting based conversations is that you're. Would it be fair to say that that you're a partner in in a GM, a partner in, with the wealth? Bent, yep, yes, because that's where, where you've come in. Yep. How many out of the eight, how many are in the wealth division? Uh, there's two of us. Two of us. Yep. Um, do you sometimes feel like you um, are waiting on the accountants to, to send clients across or, 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 or is there sort of a collaborative approach to onboarding a client to the group? Um, yeah, for new clients, it is definitely a collaborative approach, depending on what they're looking for. And we'll is that you get- hoping or that's – that's because they're going to listen to this. <laughs> so... <laughs> You're calling me out here, We can edit no. that one out. <laughs> so, so, no, I, so going forward, there's a collaborative approach. Sure, no, no, there is, there is a collaborative. I, I guess it depends on what the client first comes in looking for as well. And sometimes yeah, they go, I just, I just, I need, just need my tax return yeah, yeah, done, and then all of a sudden you unravel it and you go, well, there's a lot more than your tax yeah, return. Yeah. Um, and we've even on the well side, our clients go, I just need help with such and such, and then then you sit down with them and you're like, you. There's so much more here that we, we should be doing with you. Um, sure, we can do that, but that's that's a small part of True. The, the bigger thing. So um, there, there's always there's always those sides of things. I think for us, we we um, have a pretty robust training um, schedule for across our business. So we've got 
uh, weekly training for both the wealth side and the accounting side. And then any time that we want to, um, if I can, for lack of a better word, cross-pollinate, we will get our advisors to go and present at our, um, at our accounting training and, and vice versa as well too. So that usually when we're doing things like that, it raises that attention to say, you should be, let's look for this or keep an eye out for that. Or if they've got an income protection deduction, ask them when the last time was they reviewed it. That's uh, right. You know, and those kind of things. If they're taken on a mortgage, ask them about life insurance, get us yeah. involved in those kind of things. So it, it is just, um, it is just again, training, education. Giving people the tools to have initiative. I mean, looking at your website, you've even got a section that, that, that has, you know, your graduate program. So you're not just paying lip service in a podcast. You guys have instilled a, a solid graduate training program for both your disciplines. Is that correct? Uh, it is for our accounting side and yeah. we're currently reverse engineering it for our advice side as well. Um, we with our former CEO um, who who was here, we we identified that um, we needed a we needed a pathway for our for our graduates, and so we've actually it's called our um, accountants pathway, I think it is, and um, I'm I'm hearing the accountants correct me if I'm wrong, um, but essentially we've got a pathway from graduate right through to associate and partner, um, and so what it's sort of looking at is saying, well, you know, if if this is where you want to go in the business, this yeah. is at each level, this is the expectations and what you should be able to achieve. Um, so I think it's the senior and then we've got beyond the pathways, which is then looking at specialising tax manager, associate, yep. partner and things like that. We're now going to reverse engineer that for our wealth side. We've actually had quite a um, consistent advisor base over the last couple of years, which has been really good. Really great team of advisors there. If they're, they're listening, we really appreciate you guys, um, which has probably meant we haven't needed as much of the pathways, but we've currently got uh, a young guy, Angus, coming through. Um, he's just we've just put him on as power planner. Yep. Um, he came in as a graduate, cut his teeth in admin for a little while, been doing a great job, um, and so we're sort of using him as our guinea pig to start developing our um, our advice pathways as well too. So um, we really want a, a robust system through through the organisation. Um, it, 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 it it's not always perfect, but it is it is something that we strive to make sure that that staff feel like they've got the tools and the resources they need to get the job done, and they know what's next on the the career progression for them as well too, and what they need to be shooting for. Because I think without that clarity, sometimes it's a bit of well, what do I need to do, um, and and it's not always clear, or, or it's not always articulated well, if I can put it that way. Sometimes, yeah, and I it's, think a lot the, the nature of the sort of uh, graduate, they do want things uh, some clarity. Mm. And, uh, and, and and they need it. They need it because it's a competitive labour market. Correct. And they and a lot for a lot of them, they've come from school and, and uni where everything has been um, given to them. Um, here's what to do next. Here's what to do next. And then they get out in the world and we say, well, you'll be fine. Work it out. Um, and and you know maybe there's a bit of dumb luck that we got to where where we did in in different areas because we we sort of had the right mentor or, or found the right thing. But if we can help set people up. It, it's the impetus is on them to then um, apply themselves and, and grow and, and, and develop through that. So, so um, in relation to – you've mentioned a few times that you guys are self, self-licensed. self mm-hmm. um, Can I ask uh, – that's been something you've had from, I suppose, licensing came in in 2003. Have you had it for a long time? Yeah, it would have been close to 2003 yeah. when it first started. So we actually had one of the partners at the time. Um, he's uh, He re- retired quite a few years ago now before I even started uh, and he actually took a year off and actually went and set up the whole whole advice side, yeah. applied for the AFSL, set up all the procedures and policies and things like that. And, and so, does it work for you, being self-licensed? Um, Are you the RM, by the way? I am one of the RMs yeah, yeah, as well, yeah. So yeah does, it so. work, does it work for you? I think it does. Um, I think you've got to be really clear about why you want to do it. And and we've probably had a few of those discussions internally around, is this still what we need? Um, uh, I'll c- give a shout out to Principles Community. Um, Hi, so Con. Con, uh, yep. And we've got Donna and Sam in our in the Victoria area that help us. Yep. Um, they're, they're, they're invaluable in terms of their support and training as well too. Because- to we'll put a link, Kieran. To the uh, thing, and so I'm, I, I've, I've thrown to Kieran, who's normally here. We've got uh, we've got better Kieran, is what he's informed me, and he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact the producer's never got a mic. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no retort. There's no but, comeback at but, all. But we'll put a. Oh no, no, he's threatening. Um, we'll put a, a link to the principals community. They're um, you know, they're a, a great part of the ecosystem. Yes, and um, and so they've been they've been uh, they've been a great support through through especially some of the legislative changes and just um, how we operate. Uh, we did a health check with them. At about eighteen months ago, and we came back uh, looking pretty good, which was nice to nice to to hear as well. So they've been invaluable in that support. But for us, it's been well. 
why do we why do we continue using this? And I think for us, it's around saying, well, we 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 value um, not that we think we know everything, but we value the the agency and the autonomy around having our own license to be able to choose what's on the list and and how we give advice and things like that. Um, we've actually just uh, we've about to launch our own um, SMA um, portfolio series. So we've been working with um, Evidentia. Um, we went through a process to select that as well. So we had about eight people mm-hmm. and we went through a, uh, about a six-month process of picking our investment Well, manager. this is totally off piece, but why'd you pick them? <laughs> why'd we pick them? Um, that's a good question. So we we um, we sat down with them and, and the discussions we had with them just really resonated with how we wanted to approach investment advice with clients. Uh, so they're institutional grade, still both boutique in nature, so in, in feel for us as well. Um, a shout out to Hugh, who's um, sort of held our hand through through that process as well. Um, but he, um, yeah, they've, they've been really good at, uh, at understanding what we're looking for. Um, we've got Traditionally, we've had a really strong um, direct equities uh, portfolio piece. Um, well, self-made people running self-made businesses like the concept of self-managed self- super fund and self-directed investments. Exactly, exactly. And so we we sort of looked and went, we want to do more for clients and we want to do it uh, in a way that we can serve them better. And so that's where we sort of, the, the SMA journey has been a two-year journey for us. We've looked at MDAs, we've looked at um, off-the-shelf SMAs, and we finally got to the position where we said custom SMA makes you, the most. Got a platform that you're going to work with? Uh, uh, Hub24. So we've we've been with Hub24 for a little while now. Um, we were trialling some other off the shelf SMAs, but we just we didn't feel there was enough connection to how we we couldn't get the advisors on board with the story enough. We're getting them involved in actually helping build out these SMAs. So our advisors have been through the whole process. They, so uh, this is starting, or you're, you're involved in the implementation now? Uh, we're launching on the right. 16th of October. So, um, so there's a bit of so for everyone um, listening in the team, there's there's going to be a bit of extra work overlaid for at least the first six months for an implementation program. Which brings me to another question: <laughs> Do you have um, like have you got outsourced contractors for any part of licensing, or, or, or like this is an example? Yep, yep. So we've got um, we've got a couple of outsourced uh, partners that we're using at the moment. So we're using VVP um, uh, for uh, some admin support, and we've also got uh, an outsourced uh, para planning uh, group that we're using as well, um, TNW, that are sort of an ad hoc as we need them. Well, we're you might like with on. a project that you've just intimated. Um, uh, mm-hmm. You might have to. Um, how, how many clients you got? How many? Well, how many family units are you going to have to transfer? It's, it's about three hundred and thirty that we're looking to move across. So yeah, um, yeah there's going to be a little bit of work. Uh, ahead well, there you us. go. Six ARs. Have some fun. <laughs> well, actually five because you're not doing anything. Yeah, you just exactly. Yeah. So yep. Um, and they'll all attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, well, no, I just hear these projects, and it's good to have. Um, you know, like when you look talking about an engine room. <clears throat> Um, sometimes the, the 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 strategy piece in the C suite gets all excited and and all these great things that you know the stakeholders being the owners of the business or the partners and the clients have both got this great deal but then you put this massive pressure onto your operations team yes and you're wondering why they're sending in the dear John letters right because but having that that uh, overflow whether it be uh, the the power planning or the administration onshore or offshore has given you giving you a couple of levers and it's also cash accounting right so if you don't use them you don't pay right correct like, so so yes. you kind of like you can control the the fiscal reins and, and we have seen that in the past we've we've um, employed um, outsourced accountants as needed as well too for that overflow because at times when it's busy and you've got staff uh, either coming on or, or, or leaving um, and I think sometimes we don't we don't always give enough um, thought to how, how long it can actually take to get a staff member up to speed. Um, it's You put them in the chair and how away long they do you go. Think, how long do you think, by the way? I, I Look, it comes down to the staff member, but I think it, you've got to give them at least six months um, to, to really, for them to be at a replaceable level um, to, to what they're, to what, was that left? I mean, they can come in and start being useful from day one, but in terms of if you're going to be doing um, any sort of uh, scheduling or um, uh, where you know the the work planning and things like that, you've really got to sort of go. Well, they're not they're not going to be full yet, um, and and the first time they touch a job is not the same as the person who touched the job three times or had the client for five years. Um, they're, they're learning all these things for the first time well, and it's new. Well, well so. I am so glad that we're going to come up to a section on this podcast where we talk about how you retain people <laughs> because 
if you have to if you if you have to wait uh, six months, which is which by the way for everyone listening, that is that is uh, you know a pretty true statement at the on cost for the training, the development, the recruitment yep. cost. Um, holding on to people you want to hold on to just appears to be um, you know should be one of your five critical numbers really. Correct. Um, and we'll maybe get into that. Well, let's start now. Let's um. So sure. you've got multiple offices. You mentioned you've got um, Bendigo, and and for those of you, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll attach the um, the URL and links. Uh, great. Great looking um, sort of business from from there, and then you've got uh, one in Melbourne as well. Um, yeah, so we've got um, we've got a smaller site here in Melbourne, uh, about eight staff here on Collins Street. Um, so a smaller uh, and, and, and they're working in the office, or they're remote, or a bit of both. Uh, mainly working in the office. So uh, across our whole business, we've got uh, uh, remote. Uh, policy of uh, three days in the office and up to two days at home. Um, and which days are they? Uh, staff get to choose because it's sorted out with your manager and, and yep. things like that. Yep. So it is. We- so so their, their line manager is, is basically running a HR sort of effectiveness. Uh, not not necessarily HR effectiveness, but they are. It, it's them to coordinate with their line manager to yeah. make sure that that work's not impacted or, or different things like that. The last thing we want is everyone working from home on Friday and sending all the requests to one person to say, "Can you print this? Can you do this? Can you make sure this is done? All this meeting and things like that." So we we wanted to make sure that staff have flexibility, but it's it, we still want to be able to support the business in terms of what the business needs to do. And I think that's finding that that balance between. Um, the give and take of of both sides is is always is always a fun struggle. There's no right um, answer. No, I, I think um, you know uh, I started doing this particular type of podcast for the last two years, and and um, uh, it, it is drifting, but it's not going back to full. No, um, but what people are uh, sort of lamenting is that sometimes. Well, I was at a, a, a function last week, actually, part of the Grove Collective, which you're attending in Melbourne tomorrow. Looking forward to it. And um, they said the problem isn't with the young people not coming to the office, which everyone sort of says, oh, you know, they want to sit at home and not do it. They, they're coming to the office, but it's their middle-aged people like me who are the ones taking advantage of being at home and, and having more flexibility. So the people you want to come to the office are there. They're doing their job. Yep. But the people who they would learn from, who are also the bosses, are the ones not there. So it's kind of a little bit of an opposite to what the stereotype is. Yeah, uh, we've we've probably seen it. Uh, we did some reno- office renovations about six months ago and we've probably seen more people in the office since, since that's Very occurred. Very interesting. So, yeah. What did you put in different? Um, new desks, uh, new fresh paint job. Um <clears throat> Few things hadn't been touched for quite a while, yeah. so um, it's it's had a really nice refresh. Got some collab spaces, new kitchen area, and different things like that as well too. So quite a quite a dramatic. Um, What's a collab area for you? What's that mean? Yeah, so it's like a area. You've got a TV where you can put stuff up on the thing. Yep. You can have a small team meeting if you yep. need to talk through things and yep. and that. So it's just a, another space to be yep. able to work at rather than. Two people sitting at someone's desk while someone next to them's on the phone or trying to concentrate, or the informality of a large boardroom, which is a client-orientated structure. I- exactly, and sometimes it can be um, you don't necessarily need the boardroom for a fifteen-minute sit down and catch no. up or, or go through no. a, a, an issue with it for a client or things like that. Um, one of the interesting things was during that renovation, everyone was squashed into our, our office is actually separated into two sides because um, we've got two different buildings that are connected together. And what it forced us to do was actually sit together more. And we actually saw a lot more collaboration through those through those times where people are actually sitting next to each other and, and bouncing off each other a bit more. And I think that's helped. Like the scene from Star Wars where the compactors coming closer together... <laughs> There becomes a. I believe that's where all the relationship building happened in that film. So um, I think you're right, but I think um, density uh, intense um, HR management is probably not something you can write books on. No, no, no. There's a there's a fair. There, yeah, there, you, you would want to do it forever, but uh, it was it was good for a period. I think. Um, Gave everyone a bit more appreciation for what everyone else does as well, because a lot of times you can you can get a bit lost in your own little space. You can, and you don't always get to see what everyone else is doing. And you think if you're working in the same office, um, you know what everyone else is doing, but you don't. There's just there's a lot going on all the time, and you've got your own stuff to deal with um, that you don't always get to see. And I think that's I was reflecting um, uh, before the 
before meeting you about some of the lessons learned. And I think one of them for me has been, especially now as a partner and an owner, is um, how to uh, got to put your head up every so often and um, and survey the land, uh, get a bit more feedback because we can so very quickly get myopic in what we're doing and 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 what we need to deal with that we don't actually take that time to to take that feedback or or take in what what else is going on around us as and, well. And how have you? implemented that as the GM across all of your partners? Yeah, I think um, I think the, it's probably been more GM specific to be able to, to, to do that um, and sort of bring back any feedback from there. We we implemented a system during COVID, which was, it's called Office Vibe uh, and it's an anonymous um, office. I used to survey. use it. Did you? Yes. There you go. Yes, yes. What was your, you get your scores and you can see them going up and down and sentiment. There yes, you go. yes. So, so that that's been a um, that was that was great, especially during COVID, where we were so disconnected at times, or you you might not see someone for six months in person. That's all Teams calls or video, you know, Zoom or whatever people are using. And so there there is just a, there's a different element when you're when you're in the same room as each other. There's a different you can pick up on things that you just can't over video. Um, Whatever people say, it's just a different feeling. Well, and, context, um, right? Not just yeah, content, which correct. is which is yeah. And and um, there, when you mentioned about having people close together, it's just that comfort zone thing. Um, you know, there's a reason they that when you do the military training, a big part of it is where they take you outside of your comfort zone. Yes. Um, so that when you get into your, your swim lane, you become very good and you understand context. Yes. So, um, no, that's that's good. And, and um, just from a, a governance and, and hygiene, you, you, you um, eight partners, but you've got a you've got a board structure per se. Correct. Um, do you have any capital partners, or is the business entirely owned by the the participants? No, business is entirely entirely owned by the by the participants. So um, all of us are, are owners and and within the business working day to day. So so if if I can ask you a, a business question, sure. um, uh, you know you can grow inorganically or you can grow organically, and and you know you mentioned and we'll talk about the people side. You you do want to increase the the amount of organic growth, but to mm. grow inorganically generally means you buy something. Correct. And that's going to come from 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 cash or equity. If you were to, if, if someone was to approach you and said, I've got this great business in a great location, um, how do you guys fund it? Is it debt or is it, do you, you tapped on the shoulder to put more cash in or a combination of both? Uh, probably look at, at debt first. Um, and, but yeah, uh, I mean, we've, we've had a look at a couple of different ones in, in the past, just, just, Dipping our feet in the water, um, I think for us the big thing first though is before we even look at that is would it be a good cultural fit? I mean, we've got, oh no doubt, no yeah. doubt. I mean, if you get that wrong, you might as well tear up your money. Exactly. But but I was just interested in in um, you know the way in which you've done that and and for a business that's ninety years young, yes. Um, how long's the longest partner out of the eight been in the business? That's a good question. They're probably gonna they're gonna be laughing because I I'm just guessing here, but I think they're around twenty years or a bit more than twenty years. I'll say twenty years young. Some of them uh, have better should... skincare routines than others. Is that what you're <laughs> insinuating? <laughs> Is that it? some of them are, they they kept out of the sun when they were young? Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> Let Let's say that. No, our um we've got a couple of longer serving ones there um who've been there for I, I would say at least um twenty years, if not partners at least in the business for longer longer than that. So um. It's it's yeah it's been a, a long standing business and I, I think we all come in um, and and see ourselves as stewards to the next generation as well not just um, owners to use and abuse but we really want something that we can continue carrying forward um, as a business and, and continue uh, the legacy that's already been put in place there um, you don't you don't stay around for ninety years by doing the wrong thing so we we want to continue doing the right thing and so. do, you, do you find or do you think that having done Bachelor of Commerce Mm. Going down there and in doing the self benefit fund accounting side, and being appointed the role that you've been appointed, do you find that you're the for the financial planners you're the accountant whisperer, and for the accountants you're the financial planning whisperer? Is it like at the UN? Are you the guy with, <laughs> with with who's who's doing the interpretation of when those two quite diametrically opposed people sometimes have their management meetings? Yeah, I. 
I, I guess I can see both sides, and so I, I appreciate. It's where a Swiss watch you're wearing, I notice. So, <laughs> so um, um, is is the the, the diplomacy uh, strong in you? Is it? Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I, I think for me, I, I like to see where each party's coming from. Um, we don't we don't have too much um, argy bargy, which is which is good. But I think I think it's I, I have an appreciation for what both sides are looking for um, sometimes, and and it is it is different um, as much as we work with numbers and we're working with the same clients. Um, it is different what each area is looking for. And so I guess I've got an appreciation that um, not everything the financial planners believe is important is important for the accountants and not everything the accountants believe is important is important for the financial planners. But I think they've got they've got a lot they can learn off each other as well. And um, we can edit all this out. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, no, we're, no, we're yeah. <laughs> Well, no, I was just because um, you know. No, no, but I think it is something out there. If you're a single, single strain or single um, disciplinary firm, um, you, you're all like-minded. Where this forces you to actually um, think about other people and and their roles and and what they need to give the client as well too. So I think in some ways it forces us to think a little bit differently, or it forces us to go, well, what what does the client need first rather than what do we need yeah. first? It can be say- very. It, it can it can end up being very transactional otherwise. And we, we, as much as we all have things that we need to do, and sometimes that does take precedence, we really, we are actually quite good at the teamwork and the collaboration side of things. And I think that's, um, that's been something we've seen um, over the last couple of years is that we, we actually work well together from the top down um, and, and do that, that side of it. So. Yeah, no, it's just an observation because um, uh, whenever I look at these businesses, I, I call them big FP, small accounting, or big accounting, and and sometimes there is there's a feeling that, um, uh, or sometimes they bring in a general manager who's not from either side. Yes. And they think that's the solution, but they sometimes struggle with the fact that they can't win any argument, <laughs> right? So, but let's talk about your people, and 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 let's talk about. I suppose I want to uh, preface it by by asking you. Why do people join you? Mm. Why do they stay? And how do you grow with them? So why does someone join you in either discipline? Yeah, I think um, we uh, one that we've been around for 90 years, we're one of the largest firms in Bendigo as well too. So we've got a good standing relationship within the community. We also have um, a community foundation as well. So we we are actually involved in in, in the community. We, we run uh, scholarships and grants and we've been giving back to the community in a lot of different ways. Um, we sponsor some some large events within Bendigo as well too. So um, the it's the Stratagem Winemakers Festival that we do each year. I did, and that's, I did read that entire section on your page. Yep. So that, that's right in the middle. I, of, oh, also you you help with the business collaboration. Oh, that's a second readings. Yes. Yeah, that's a Another area as well too. So we run each month a Bendigo Business Collaborative where yep. um, we've got businesses that come together and talk about different issues and and uh, regardless how they if they're them. a client of yours or not. Yeah, we're pretty pretty well agnostic done. there. Yep. yep. Um, so so yeah. So, so sorry. Back to the winemakers. First yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I thought you might have questions on yep, that. Yep. Yep. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. So um, um, uh, what was yeah? So that's I suppose that, that that mixes a bit of business and and also pleasure and a bit of pride in the area. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Um, we've been supporting them for many years, um, uh, right from the days they operated out of Castlemaine. They now they now operate right in the middle of Bendigo. So we actually cordon off uh, Roslyn Park, which is a park right in the centre of town, um, and then winemakers come in and people can showcase the wines. We've got a tent. Uh, we get uh, we actually run a class for winemaking. We host our clients as VIPs and and things like that as well too. So uh, it's a really great event for us to mingle with our clients, but it's also a great event um, for us to just be out there in the community as well too. Um, probably not probably not giving us back as much as our community foundation, but it's just being a part of the community and 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 seeing what's there. So, um, Well, let's maybe parlay into um, the foundation because from what you've told me, I ask you why people join and you started off with saying, you know, we give back to the community via um, a business initiative. Yep. Um, we give back via uh, something we're proud of regionally, mm. which is the wine um, winemakers initiative. But I suppose something that really hits home is is um, you have a, a, a long and significant um, track record of giving back to um, charities and, 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 and events. And I'm looking at your website here um, and there's a, a myriad of, of – of projects that you've, uh, you've undertaken, so maybe give us a bit of a feel for that, because purpose is genuinely one of the reasons people 
are attracted to you. Mm, and that's, I mean, for us, we 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 are a local community. Um, we are in Melbourne as well too, so I'm not not discounting what we do in Melbourne. Um, but Bendigo has been has been sort of the the head office for a while, and we want to continue being a not just. Um, an employer in the community, but giving back to the community and involved in the community initiatives. We've got um, a lot of our a lot of our board are involved in different uh, not for profits or local organisations, sporting groups as well too. Um, so it's not just the community foundation. But the community foundation is is basically a way for us to um, give scholarships out to local charities, um, local. Uh, we've got community theatres and different things that we support as well too. Do you have an example of a scholarship that you've you've given the last couple of years? Yeah, so we've got um, we've We've got uh, Nexus, which is a community theatre for um, for secondary school age kids, and they run a production each year, and so we 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 support them each year through that process and make sure that they are able to put that on. So they put that on at the Capital Theatre. Um, they get kids involved um, and things like that. But we've got um, people involved in lots of different areas, and and we I mean we encourage that. Um, if we get on t- a bit later on with our flexible work, it's sort of built around being able to still be involved in in those areas. Um, we've got a lot of staff in sporting sporting um, teams and things as well too. So we really, we really, we understand that we're not just a business. We're actually people, and and people are involved with people, and and people are involved in the community. We want to be able to support that. So, so. when I'm when I'm looking at um, why people are attracted to you, or well, Purpose always come purpose and and you know whether you're giving back is is one of the the metrics. Yep. Um. So so, so is income and and I suppose the 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 double edged sword that was COVID is that a lot of people who potentially are local from Bendigo and the surrounding regions because you yep. would have attracted people from the surrounding um, regions now all of a sudden have this ability to work um, for anyone anywhere. They do. So um, how have you managed to compete? Um, with that fact, um, against you know the normal cost pressures of of of, of business. Yep. Um, so so probably a couple of things there. One is um, we we went to a really uh, flexible working arrangement. We just sort of said we really want to be able to support staff where they're at. Um, so we've got um, plenty of part time staff that work for us as yep. well, which we which we support. Well, you and came to this great. business as a maternity leave contract, a contract from yes. memory. There Correct. you go. So yeah. so um, there's there's obviously been uh, sort of form, and when we look at um, that particular facet, being able to be flexible around um, young working mums and dads is is probably something that. Um, especially in that Goldilocks town, be most appreciated. Yes, yeah, and uh, and and we know that um, Bendigo is not that huge that we that we can um, we can sit there and, and pick and choose everyone. What we want to do is actually um, find the right people and support them in in being part of the team. Um, and and if that's working part time for a period, if that's however that looks, we we want to be uh, we want to be supportive in that. Um, we we introduced coming out of COVID, we've got our work from home policy that we introduced. We also introduced RDOs as well, which was a big a big one that uh, people were looking for. So people can uh, take one day off uh, each month. Um, they work a little bit longer and they've got that. Uh, we also have health and wellbeing. So, so just, just on that one, yep. um, so they're, they're working a few extra hours um, a, a week and that, that allows them to to take a, an RDO. Is that right? Correct, okay. yeah. So um, we, it was- So it's that flexibility around time. You mentioned earlier, you're not just nine to five. If, if the work's on- Yes. Um, then, then, and and there's, uh, and this can be tracked via your all your software, right? Easy peasy. Uh, yeah. Well, because yeah. we're multidisciplinary, we still have timesheets. So, well, we're going to talk about that. I'm going to re- <laughs> I'm going to backtrack in a second. So keep going. So you, yep. you've got the RDOs, which got the RDOs. which is great because if people want to go and visit people, if they're not from your area and they want to spend a bit of time with their family or whatnot, it's it's good. It's yeah. another. It's a longer. It, yeah. It's a. It's a. Might be a long weekend for them. Might be an opportunity to catch up on, on different things in in life that, yep. that can get you down. Um, uh, we've got the work from home. We also have um, three health and wellbeing days a year. So if people, um, uh, instead of chucking a sickie, can sort of say, I want to use one of my personal So Sydney days. Swan supporters had to take one <laughs> this year. So I understand. Oh, now, it's crystal clear coming from Sydney why you would have such a uh, – I mean, jokes aside, it's, it's, it's also part of your responsibility under the Psychological Safety Act. Correct, yes. And so for us, we sort of said we want um, people to be able to – Take time when they need and not feel guilty about calling in sick or or working through a period where they might just need a day or here or there where where mm-hmm. they can sort of 
take a bit of stock and a bit of time. So we support that. We also support um, they can start early and finish early or start late and finish late. So um, start times vary from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, and finish times are anywhere from 3 p.m. till um, 7 p.m. at night. So. Oh, mate, I'm an early bird. I'd love that. <laughs> I'd love that. I'd love that. It's, uh, um, yeah, well, that's uh, – uh, especially in daylight saving, buys you another day, doesn't it, down well, here? It does, and especially for guys who are, sorry, people, um, guys, I'm using plural for everyone, but uh, for people who want to go out and play sport and yeah. things like that, they can duck Take their kids to training. sport, you go to swimming, whatever. Exactly, yeah, yeah. It's good so, so for us, it's just around saying, look, we, we know there's work to be done and we want to support you in that, um, but we also know that um, that you're people with lives and we, we know that um, if you've got the opportunity to go and do the things you need to do, mm-hmm. um, you, you then bring your best self to work rather than worrying about missing that thing that mm-hmm. you, you wish you were at or um, or being able to take the time to do the other things that you love to do as well. So, so, so for financial planning recruitment, do you, do, you, do you engage a recruiting firm or do you use psych tests or, 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 or do you have a methodology? Yeah, good good questions. Um, so we've got a few different avenues. Um, our last hire, Angus, who I mentioned, was actually through our principals community. Yep. So they they said that we've got an opportunity for a grad, and we said let's let's yep. let's give it a go. Right. Um, we've got uh, recruitment agencies that we talk to. Um, we we use the good old seek sometimes as well. We've got um, staff referrals, which is which has been a um, a great way to, to also see people into the business. So if- well, that gives you an initial filter. Correct. Yes. So staff staff get a, uh, a referral bonus as well too for for referring um, someone who if, if they make it through their six months. Um, so they um, so that's there as well. Do you and, find them in in week twenty six just bringing them coffee, making sure they're okay, <laughs> you know, just checking in on them? Is that, is that um, it? I haven't actually taken notice of that, but uh, but no. Look, most most uh, most uh, most hires that we have uh, usually make it past that six month mark anyway. So, um, but yeah, it's um, we also use disc profiling. Um, so we use love a, the a disc. disc disc assessment yep. tool. Um, yep. I I hadn't used it before, and I I had the I I did the test and I read the report and went, "That's me." I didn't realise it. It's pretty um, close, isn't it? Yeah, and and being able to see um, whether it's at a leadership level or however you want to use it. Um, being able to see how other people are around you, you can sort of then understand. Oh, that's that's why they ask those questions. It's right. not it's not because they don't trust me. It's because they need all the information for more detail. Yeah, and and I yeah. there was times I used to take it personally where I'm like, what, do they not think I know what I'm talking about? But then I was like, oh, you're yeah, not that you want to put people in a pigeonhole, but you're that kind of person. You need that information to help your well being. Where I'm like, back of the envelope. Let's go. Great, perfect. Um, so, so everyone gets a disc on the way in, do they? Yeah, and then we right. we've got a comparison tool. So then if you're if you're a Line manager, um, GM, you can sit down and actually have a look at how how you might be able to interact with them better, mm-hmm. um, or if you're coming up against maybe a challenging conversation, what's the best way to have it that they will actually um, take it on board in a constructive way, rather than it feeling like you're attacking them. And it can just be around um, understanding how how they like to be approached and things like that, and that can change the whole nature of how you have that discussion with them. And I I found that for me it was, oh, okay, if that person actually finds that grating, I won't do that, where I appreciate people being a sharpshooter with me and just going. So your collaboration room's the interrogation room. (laughs) No, no. Why why are these D-clips on the wall? (laughs) I, I appreciate people being blunt and straight. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't get the nuance. Just, uh, just give it to me as it is. So, well, yeah. the good news is, is that for someone who doesn't get a nuance, to actually know the word nuance is is beginning of to <laughs> your, your your seven part therapy. Yeah, appreciate that. So, Thank you. um, so then, so that's how you're getting people on. Yep. Um, you've then, I mean, your own journey has been through administration, power planning, and financial planning. And I forgot to ask, what what FP um advice tech are you using? To prepare your plans. Yeah, just wanted to backfill that one. Yep. Um, do you do you want to hear a little on the tech stack? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. So um, X Plan we use because X Plan and um, X Plan and OPEX. So we use OPEX for our document generation there as well. Um, we've just brought in RevX. Um, so uh, RevX we're, we're using for our revenue tracking because um, it's a checking the cash. It's been a game changer yep. for that. So that's helped automate and direct debit and things like that. Uh, CDM Solutions, which I heard on one of yours recently mentioned as well too. So we've been using them for I think eighteen months or more now. Okay. Um, so we we're we we're actually pretty early on with them, uh, but they've been great for our insurance. Um, Adam, our insurance. 
expert. Uh, yep. He's he's it's uh, just been able to bring all the policies together in one place and know what people have has Thank been God. has been really good. And it's yeah, it's a nightmare otherwise. Um, class super because we've got SMSFs everywhere, yep. and class super is great for that. Um, we're moving to FYI as sort of our document storage client piece database and everything like that. So that's where we're heading over the next 12 months. So we're currently in the process of building out how we do all of our filing, how we build out all of our tasks, and there's automations within that as well too. So we want to utilise that and, side of things. And is the baseline Microsoft Suite? Yeah, baseline is Excel and Word, and um, you don't get too far an accounting firm without Excel. So, um, And then uh, Hub24 is our probably our, our main platform we're using at the moment. And we've got CMC for just our share broking clients because yep. we were um, traditionally, uh, we had a, a strong share broking arm uh, and we've sort of tried to move away from that more into that holistic advice approach because it's just, you you want to you want to look after clients in the right way. So, Well, look, thank you very much for that last one and a half minutes of, 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 <laughs> of giving us your tech stack. And actually, bang, 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 bang. it's been 45 minutes before we've been able to play BDM bingo. So for every BDM who does business with you, who's been sitting here going, when's he going to say us? <laughs> Congratulations. You can all have your, your your little shot of whatever it is that you play BDM bingo. So, but no, um, it sounds like, look, the biggest thing um, that uh, multidiscipline practices is are the central source of truth, right? Correct. Um, and um, there's no, there's no silver bullet. No. Um, and it if does there is, require. Can you tell me? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think you were only mentioning you were listening to a few of the previous podcasts with some multi-discipline um, practices, trying to glean out their their yes. um, information. So, yep. Um, but you have brought together some uh, some pieces of technology that mirror your client base. Mm. So, thanks for that. Now, when when you've got your team members, so you've got partners, but looking across the business, most of the partners have been practitioners. Yes. So they've been either accountants or financial planners. In order to keep people, is, is there anything uh, on the horizon for strategy to expand sort of uh, whether it be uh, short-term incentive schemes or long-term or, or like ultimate, like more partnerships across the, the business? Yeah, so we've got... Um, yeah, you're keeping them, basically. Yeah, yeah. So we've got, obviously, our pathways uh, through through growing and developing, but we've also got uh, a pretty robust associate program as well, too. So we've currently got three associates in, in there, um, one in our advice side and two in our accounting side. So yep. um, they, they come and join us for AGMs. Uh, they come and be a part of conversations. They right. They come and be a part of our partners lunches that we have so each month. So how do you month. become an associate in your business? Uh, so there's a... We put a call out for associates. Yep. Um, so we'll do that on a on an ad hoc basis. Um, so I might be working with you for a couple of years. Yep. And then uh, two things happen. One is I get asked, and I the other one is I accept, and I run into an associate program. Is that right? Uh, well, there's a so we put a call out for people to apply and an expression of interest. Uh, and so then they've they, got to want it. Yep. And then there's an application process. So yep. they've got to bring to the table why yep. why they they are valuable to the business. Yep. Um, They're doing a business plan within your business. Correct. And yeah. and sort of saying here's here's where my strengths lie and yeah. how I can bring value to the business. Oh. And and that gets them in the door um, to then sort of and and it's I guess the associate program is really for us to both sides to sort of touch and feel and see whether this is something we like because yep. sometimes you think you want something and then you get in it and go, oh, that's not actually as exciting as I thought it was or that's actually a lot more stressful than it needed to be or that's exactly what I want to do and let's yep. keep going. And, um, I mean, for myself and Emmy, we came through that associate program. We, Wonderful. We we get set up. So proof's in the pudding. It's it, not it's not just a thought bubble, right? Yeah, we'd ask us in another couple of years. But, um, yeah, uh, proof is in the pudding. But it is it is going through a robust process of we, we get a, an external coach as yep. well to um, they work with us on goals and um, from what I've found you know most businesses regardless of their size or scale do get a lot out of out of coaches mm. and I'll also add that um, it's not just pick and stick a coach so if you speak to you know the best corporate coaches that they'll tell you that they've got a lifespan and quite often they want them turned over mm. because if they're not if you're not implementing what they're recommending within, you know, 24 or 36 months, they're probably wanting to move on as well. So yes. so I see people with coaches and I see them also moving and yep. also some have different skills and yeah. genres as well. And, and I'm, I'm currently working with a coach myself as well too. So Adele Martin um, is uh, someone that I, that we engaged uh, in December. So we've been I've been tracking with her for a while now. Well, you wouldn't have spoken to her last month because she was in, um, uh, she was in uh, Los Angeles at the – because she, she podcast for us. Um, I know, I saw uh, From that. the future, uh, future whatever 
Future Focus uh, conference. Yes, yeah. So uh, I actually caught up with her uh, not long after she got back, and she yeah. gave me a bit of a debrief. And, pay um, attention to podcast three out of that series, both her and Peter. Are that tired slash been out that they were croaky. <laughs> so uh, normally two consummate professionals, but I felt like that I was uh, I was listening to some some pretty pretty well worn sort of uh, <laughs> footsteps there. Call it the jet lag, maybe. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, They're yeah, both the going to kill me. Sure. Shout out. Adele. Shout out, Peter. No, so um, Adele's been great uh, in, our, in in probably um, getting me to think a bit differently about my approach as well too. Um, it, I don't know if I'd call it the sales process that we have. Um, a lot of people don't like the word sales, but thinking through how do we get a better client experience onboarding front end? How do we attract the right clients? How do we have the right conversations with clients? And, and I think sometimes as practitioners, we spend a whole lot of time on the technical side that we don't actually always develop the soft skills um, side of, of what we need to engage clients well um, and and to be able to convey our um, our value to clients really at the end of the day because if they don't see that there's value in us, they're not going to want to work with us. And or so, refer people. Exactly, and that's the other side of it mm. as well too. So um, Adele's been great at, at getting to think think through all those other little bits and pieces that um, that sometimes we miss or we don't think are important, but those little one percenters can actually really change the game in terms of if you're seeing more people and more people wanting to sign with you, um, well, you're having less hard conversations or less disappointment and you're actually seeing growth and organic growth within the business as well too. So. Well, and, and you mentioned you built your structure in the financial planning business and you've probably built a capacity cup that's, that's a little bit bigger than what you've got currently. Correct. So your motivation is going to be to get your existing ARs to actually do that organic growth, and 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 how they they do that is 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 doing the one percenters. Correct, and we've um, we've also been uh, working on we've done started doing some workshops as well too, and taking them out to to potential new clients and things like that as well too. So that's been a but it's been a great uh, great uh, push outside the comfort zone, uh, but it's also been great to see the results come from from doing those things as well. So it's um it's been it's been a, a journey of of going. Um, I'm the business owner now. What what do I what do I want to do and need to do next? And and part of it is 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 that is that growth bit and getting outside the comfort zone and um and, and doing those kind of things. So. I find that when you get uh, to become a business owner and. For those people out there listening to it, it's double-edged sores, right? You've got the glamour of being a business owner and possibly the debt associated with having to buy in. Um, what it does is it, it gives you clarity in doubling down on the things you should do. And it I think it gives you the tools to get rid of the noise. Mm. You know, like um, uh, executing on your strategy is the most important Yes. Important piece. Yeah. But there's always lots of noise. There's so many distractions. Um, emails, as, as a base example, you can spend all day on emails, but it doesn't move the needle. Um, and so I, I actually read a, a book last year. Um, we take my wife and, and, and I and the kids head off for a week before Christmas. Um, we actually take a bit of time off before Christmas when everyone else is running around crazy. We carve out a bit of time. Mate, you got four kids. You're going for the discounts. So I, I'm, I'm a, I, I've got a big family as well. It's like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I've got to take you out of school just outside of school holidays. Well, no, we, our, our, our daughter finishes early, thank goodness, so we're not pulling her out of any school, but we get uh, we get all the Christmas presents done before we go. So right. we sort of come back into the week leading up to Christmas with every all the presents already wrapped, everything ready to go and so we can sort of ease into Christmas rather than this mad rush that we used to have into Christmas and so it's been great but I usually try and read a book or two while I'm away because mm-hmm. that's usually get a bit of downtime at, at night more so than during the day there's usually too many questions during the day to uh, answer for the kids before you can read anything yeah, but- why did you bank my, rub me at Monopoly dad <laughs> When are we going out again? When's the, when's the beach again? So, uh, which is, is great, but um, yeah, take a bit of time at night to read. And I read this book last year. Ten X is easier than two X, and it was basically the premise of it was that if you set a really big goal, you get real clarity over. There's only a couple of ways to get to that goal. If you set a small goal, you've probably got twenty different ways that you could get there. But if you have a big um, big guiding, guiding North Star that you're heading towards. Well, there's only really a few things you can do to get there. And so from that, I sort of went, well, one is we need to grow and I want to grow. And so I need to start working on how we do that. So, And we spoke um, on that exact same uh, topic we spoke about. I said, well, you know, if people listen to you talk about yourself and the business for for a period of time, what would you like the outcome to be? And, and you mentioned, you said, well, look, we've actually got a pretty well-established um, structure for our 
our existing team. We've got great pathways. But I feel that, um, this is you saying, you feel that there's probably people uh, in, in Bendigo and Melbourne who, who might have smaller um, businesses. There might be great great planners might have smaller businesses and that, that real crossroad yes. of what, what do I do? They Do they... And they're at that two X, right? Yes. And 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 you know, if 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 I was to say, you know, if you if there was someone listening who um, has a business and and maybe doesn't have the accounting or, or doesn't have the financial planning, would you guys entertain um, discussing or talking to them in the next twelve months or so? Yeah, I think we're definitely open to that. Those discussions. That's 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 sort of the next step in in what we want to do. There's only really so many different ways you can attract clients, and one is either to or try and organically grow, um, or the other one is to to partner with other people, um, either through merger or acquisition or however that looks, and um, maybe bring bringing support to their business that they might not have otherwise, or, or and licensing them. potentially. You know, like if you've got, would there be an ability that that um, uh, have you ever had this scenario where people have come in and operated um, in your business and then come across, or has it always been you've just purchased a business? Um, for us, we've actually most of the growth has been always organically because um, you've had that engine to start, haven't you? Correct. Yeah. So the the accounting referrals has has, has been there, but to go to that next level, I think that's where we need to start looking outside where yep. we are, and and we've because we're self licensed, it gives us flexibility to be able to. Um, to look at different options that we couldn't look at if we didn't have our own license. So I think, I think for us, we're we're sort of we're sort of interested in what's what's out there and what people are looking for as well. Too, we want to work with people on that. And we know not everyone's, not everyone wants to change, but there are some people who are probably frustrated with where they're at, and um, and we we're probably open to having a discussion around how we could support them differently in their business or how how that could look going forward. Yeah, look, we'll provide all, all the relevant links that, that people can um, reach out to you. Yep. And the, the, the final question Personal I want to Personal mobile number, is that what you're suggesting? Or? Uh, yeah, well, it's um, <laughs> it's pretty well out there anyway. Yeah, yeah great. Um, <laughs> the question I wanted to ask you is uh, four, four kids under, under eight. Um, if I was to sit down and talk to them and ask them to explain what dad does, what would they say? Uh, dad goes to work. Yeah, and what does dad do at they, work? They have no idea. Um, they just know that dad has meetings and dad talks to people and dad helps people with with their money and that's about as far as as, as far as it's gone, to be honest. Um, I have tried to explain to our oldest one a little bit and she she gets bits and pieces, but the rest just say dad dad does work. The the last um, Father's Day gift I got from my son, he put down that I was a builder. Right. So, building wealth, well, well, like spin sure. it the way I you said, want, yeah, right? Exactly. Yep. Building wealth. Um, it, it's probably because you see me out the back trying to do projects and things like that. My youngest yep. daughter actually got me band aids for when I cut myself doing projects out the back. So right. I think between the two of them, that's that's their uh, that's their view. But uh, look, I think I think uh, as 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 they grow up, I, I want to make sure that they've got the right. Um, They've got everything they need to be successful in life, and as a parent, that's what you want to be doing. Well, that's the the money side, but also to supporting them in in where they go and what they do. So, yeah, and I want them to be uh, to, to be honest. Part of my legacy is I want them to be able to go look at what Dad built, um, but it, he was still around. I don't I don't want to be um, I don't want to be off building something and going. This is for the kids, but they'll never appreciate it because I'm never there. I still want to really make sure I've got time for them. Well, I don't think you could go off building something because you wouldn't get it approved based on <laughs> on, on on your backyard work. So, but look, um, look, fantastic final sentiment there. And 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 look, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for coming all the way um, uh, from Bendigo to, to see me face to face. It's always great to have um, a, a great engine room podcast. The ensemble may, um, sort of um, motto is the positive evolution of financial advice, and and financial advice is not just the big cities. Mm. It's there's there's plenty of quality businesses that need quality help in in all the regional areas um, in Australia. With yours being one of them, and 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 the bit I liked about today was how um, it appears that you've you've seen be getting a decent working balance between the accounting and and the financial planning components of your business. Which there'll be lots of people listening out there going, I wonder, you know, how that works. And uh, your your smirk here tells me that it's always a work in progress. <laughs> it is. But but thank you very much for your time today, Chris. Yep. And um, I, I'm sure that Stratagem will go from strength to strength. Cheers, mate. It's been a pleasure, Roxy. Thanks.